Here is a 2024 Lexus TX 350 in Celestial Silver. This is getting 10 horsepower more than the base model Grand Highlander with seven pound feet of torque more. It's gonna be more refreshed. It's all new. It slots in just above the RXL. I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides and is this a better option than going up to a GX? Because it's going to be sipping fuel with the four cylinder turbocharged engine underneath. In the front, you're gonna get LED headlights and daytime runnings. They integrate into the top part of the grill with the Lexus badges on top, horizontal bars that's going to take over the majority of the fascia that goes into the matte black with the LED fog light assembly and over eight inches of clearance. Underneath the long hood is gonna house the 2.4 liter four cylinder turbocharged, producing 275 horsepower and 317 pound feet of torque paired to an eight speed automatic transmission. Achieving 21 MPGs for the city and 27 MPGs for the highway, which is going to be better than the GX. Towing is rated at 5,000 pounds, so it's gonna be less, but it's the same as the Grand Highlander, just more polished and refined. With 22 inch wheels, this is an upgrade. It comes standard at 20 inches. And the way Lexus polishes off the side, given the gloss black element that goes into the windows to make it look longer than it actually is by a visual perspective, but it's still longer than the RXL, which gives optimal leg space and head space, plus you're getting extra cargo capacity because you're getting nearly 100 cubic feet of max cargo with all the seats folded down. And the rear is going to be similar to the Grand Highlander. LED taillights, we have a digital rear view camera, front and rear parking sensors, bird's eye view, and 360 degree reverse. The difference really is the lower part of the bumper. It doesn't come out as much and you're getting more of a Lexus design for the rear tail lights, the Lexus badging. So it's still polished off, giving the traditional SUV. Power lift gate going into 20.2 cubic feet of storage. You get the bag holders here, the 12 volt charger here underneath the floor with a little leather strap, has some storage for the privacy and the spare tire. Electronically fold the third row down at a 50-50 split. That's going to increase cargo to 57.4 cubic feet. Split fold these captain seats. Max cargo to 97 cubic feet. Fourteen way power seat adjustment, leather first and second row with some suede inserts. It's perforated. Fourteen way power seat adjustment for the passenger headroom and leg room. It is wide in the interior, large pocket for the passenger. The suede inserts for the dash, satin aluminum. I like how it wraps around. The dash is a different layout with the Lexus informational display. That's a 14 inch touchscreen, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Sirius XM, AM, FM, streaming, Bluetooth audio, Wi-Fi hotspot with 4G capabilities, a 360 degree reverse camera with full trajectory. We have the bird's eye view, which you just push the button right here and it can go all around the vehicle. A nice thing, that Lexus does with their infotainment screen. Is it still touch for the dual climate control, but you actually have physical knobs here that you can use. The air vents are gonna be under here, USB ports, QI wireless charger, and another nice thing is a hidden storage pocket that they offer with a 12 volt charger. These cup holders are removable. So you can take it out and you'll have even more space where you can configure them in. I would personally leave them in. And the key fob for the new TX. The gear lever and everything is going to be soft materials, more or less around it. It's gonna be more firm right in this area. Auto hold, soft to touch here, and it's a two tier that opens up to a deep storage pocket. Leather wrap steering wheel, multi-function with adaptive cruise control lane keep assist and the paddle shifts, a 12.3 digital reader that can go through an array of information on the large heads up display. When you click onto there, you can change all the display layouts for the heads up or for the actual infotainment screen for the driver. 
pretty nice because you don't have to take your eyes off the road. Everything's there, and this is the sensitive button on both sides. The door panels and the dash can figure it together. You're gonna have some soft materials. It's gonna be more everyday up here. Mark Levingston upgraded sound system. Push the button to get out, or you could just simply pull the lever, one touch up and down for all the windows, and a long storage pocket with a beverage holder carved out with a large pano moon roof and a digital rear view mirror. Headroom for the second row and leg room storage behind both of the front seats. Third climate control, heated, ventilated seats, USB and a storage tray there. Also the storage compartment here in the center, which just like the front, you can remove these and you can just remove this whole center part out. So it'd just be a pass through to go into the third row. These are captain seats, which they adjust. The way it adjusts here is you can recline it. So you can just relax. You can also adjust these forward, which would make it very undesirable for me. The door panel will have manual sun shades in here because it's Lexus, I would like to see power sun shades. Air vents in the ceiling, soft materials pretty much everywhere where it needs to be except for right here, which is good for cleaning. Push to get out and it's gonna be soft to touch. Storage pocket is going to be almost the same size as the front. To enter into the third row, push the button on the top, slide it forward and that's the opening to get into the back. The rails are going to be pushed back a little bit, but this is a two seat in the back, so it's not too much of an issue. I'm gonna roll this back as far as we can so you can see leg space. And these seats in the back electronically recline back. USB port, air vents, cup holders, an area for a tablet, a phone, and it's gonna be soft materials here. 275 horsepower and 317 pound feet of torque. It does weigh over 4,200 pounds, and you can tow up to 5,000 pounds. Is it going to be enough to motivate the vehicle for your day in and day out use? I would say so, because anything with this type of power underneath it should be enough, and you're getting good gas consumption, turbocharged four cylinder, so you should feel it at the low note, and usually Lexus and Toyota are pretty good at giving power and performance going even past 60 to 70 miles per hour. As for the feel to it, it's going to be quiet, butter smooth suspension. If you go to the TX500H, you'll get the F Sport tuned suspension and you're getting 91 horsepower more than this and a zero to 60 is gonna be about two, almost two seconds quicker than this, but you're not really buying a TX for that type of performance. You're buying this because the RXL is going to be too small for the third row. You need more cargo capacity. You have good towing capabilities. You sit up high off the ground. You still have eight inches of clearance in the butter smooth suspension. But because we have to see how it is dynamically speaking, let's see how well she performs. It's like a big yacht just moving forward, but smooth. It's gonna have a lot of body roll. You're expecting that because like I said, it weighs over 4,200 pounds and it's not dynamically speaking for that when you're getting the 350. It's gonna take me to some pros and cons, starting off with the pros on the new TX. You're finally getting leg space for the third row occupants and you don't have to go up to the GX trim. Now, it is gonna be questionable because the GX trim, when you get into a base model, it's going to be about the same price, maybe even a little bit less in the MSRP. So do you option that or go here? But even in the third row there, it's gonna be a lot more tight. So this goes a little bit above that level trim also, which Lexus is, giving a lot of different variants to make it a little bit more desirable for people that need six passenger or seven passenger layout vehicles. The captain seats is an upgrade, which will take me to a con. There is a significant amount of upgrades that you have to do, but it doesn't necessarily alter the price too much. not only butter smooth, 
but it's a lot more composed, quiet. Optioning the 500H will be a six-speed automatic transmission. And then taking me back to some more pros is how they cleaned up this center cluster here where you're resting your arms because now you have a lot more cargo capacity because we don't have a full pass-through. And the same thing is with the Grand Highlander. But the difference here is you actually have more storage nooks and hidden pockets. So they have just refined it a little bit better on the con. The screen is large. I would be fine having the Highlander screen implemented here because it would sit a little bit lower and kind of more flush, but it's keeping the traditional Lexus look. I guess I would say the big problem that I have with this vehicle is it's just a refined Toyota and I'm paying about 10 grand more to get it. Yes, I'm getting more performance, but I'm getting the same towing capabilities, more or less the same suspension. It's gonna be a little bit more quiet and it does feel a lot more plush. But to give a whole new trim to the Lexus line, I get what they're doing because they're giving you more trims. It just, I would feel like refreshing the GX completely would make that a better choice than giving a whole new brand or trim. One thing that is you will be driving about three RPMs pretty much all the time because it is a heavier vehicle and it is a smaller engine. If they would have implemented the V6 that was in the prior generation for the Highlander, I think it would have had a little bit more pep to it. Maybe even throw a turbocharge on that and this thing would be crazy. However, when you're going into the 500H, you're getting over 400 pound feet of torque. So it will be a night and day difference in drive. It will also drink more fuel, but then the same towing capabilities. I like that we have the digital rear view mirror because this is something that's not implemented even in BMW. So when you're considering the value that you're getting, if you were to compare this against the new X7, night and day, you're gonna, you could get this for 15, 20 grand cheaper, buy a his and her vehicle, and you have just as much luxury as the Beamer. Now it's not gonna be as performance driven, Going against Mercedes, the same thing. That's gonna be probably 15, 20 grand more also in which you're gonna have a little bit more electronics for the second and third row. But I think Lexus gives you enough, but is the TX350 gonna be enough power for a day in and day out use? Turn radius is not bad. It's really close, about two lanes. I think it will, and you're getting the best MPGs when you go this route. Upgrading with the 22 inch wheels is going to look like the TX500H, which is a discounted price when you're considering what you're getting. And the last con that I could see is this Celestial Silver. It's the same exact color as the Grand Highlander in which when I go Lexus, I want it to be different and unique to Lexus. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Check out the next video, merchandise, website, and Instagram. Leave a comment and a like. And I'd like to thank Lexus of Wesley Chapel for giving us this 2024 Lexus TX350 for our car review.